feel like a, I feel like I'm a total imposter as a teacher unless I'm um, making work. Yeah, so in that respect, it is professional. But I, I, I like to think of grad school. I mean, there are different, different orientations with this. Some some grad schools are a bit more of a um, like a trade school yeah. attitude, where they've got a professional practices component, where people learn how to promote their work or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't. I'm not interested in that. I, I like the idea that it's a, a place to, to, um, to experiment, to test to strengthen, to grow, to learn, and that it's somehow analogous to what would go on in the humanities. The institution is part of what art has become. Art is a sort of, uh, or much art, much modern contemporary art is, is um, sorting out what the nature of art consists. And so I think that if one takes that seriously, one would be always thinking about the institution as a work in progress, something that needs adjustment. Also, if, if, if what, what matters in, in an art school is um, this, the, the juggling of many different perspectives, then those perspectives ought to include a thinking about how, how the hell it should be organized. You know, I don't think you want, you'd never want an art school to become too rigid, too, too um, to routine. If, 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 if you think about whatever it is, the subconsciousness about art and its own definition, and worrying about, its, about what it is, its, its own definition, well that's, that is navel-gazing, but I feel, like, I feel like there's been a lot of discourses in the last 20 years that have come into art having to do with um, the context of art the social context, the historic context, that often what, it's not really navel-gazing, it's sort of the opposite. It's looking out and around and seeing what, uh, how art functions in the world, what it means there, what it's come to mean, how to adjust that meaning, how to um, unsettle it even, or criticize it. Yeah. And so, um, that takes people straight into uh, like social practices in which the definition of art extends to all kinds of things. Uh, interventions, changing elements in the world, maybe even doing good, doing good things. Starting a soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if um, conceptual art is a bit of, of a redundancy, because after all, all art has a conceptual component. I think there was a kind of exciting moment in which conceptual art thought they could um, be done with the material object. Like you don't need a thing because the concept is enough. It has its own autonomous life and there's something kind of radical about, about, uh, about that as material. But I think stylistically, it's, in some ways it's, it devalues something like painting, which is so bodily and muscular, and, and I guess sometimes um, people think as a consequence it's, it's a little bit unthinking or just merely intuitive. But, but I feel like every artwork is a, is a conundrum. It's a living difficulty that's alive and, and seeks a relationship that's, uh, that's like any other um, conceptual art or not. Uh, in some ways, maybe conceptual art, the idea of conceptual art um, eviscerates the thing. Yes, it's true. It's just mere, it's just the concept, and loses its body, loses its uh, its its um, kind of sexy sociability. But all of these things um, are navigated between the thing and the spectator, with the artist as a sort of ghostly presence with their signature on the thing. So, I mean, you, you still have to, I mean, there is no such thing as the thing in itself. The thing is definitely always sort of tangled in a whole body of expectations and, and languages and histories and, and there's a kind of a chattering cloud around, around the work. Um, but hopefully the, the, the relationship that the viewer establishes with the work um, 
sort of, I don't know what the word is, it, 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 it compresses that cloud into something like, a, like an intense experience.